All right, so everybody can hear me okay, right? So today's lesson is gonna be about horizontal welding. Okay, a lot of you guys are finishing up your flat projects, your flat padding projects, and working on to moving horizontal. I think there's two of you that started in the morning class. Uh, so we're gonna go over, we're gonna talk a little bit about angles, amperage, uh, you know, clean up, and then uh, the, uh, the angles are uh, the most important part, okay? So, first thing, we have our welding machine set up, okay? And we have 7018 8th inch electrode that we're using, okay? I have my chip and hammer, my wire brush, my welding hood, and then I already have my plate tacked up here to the table, okay? Now, for you guys working in your booths, those tables are all adjustable, so all you have to do is loosen it, and you can move the table up and down wherever you need to uh, to be able to complete this well. Now for me, I don't have an adjustable table here in the center of the shop. So what I did was I improvised, rather than standing on my, or kneeling down here to weld, just took a piece of three by three tubing, put a couple of tacks on it, enough to hold it, and then I tacked my piece right to that, okay? Now, if you guys have to do that, one thing that I would recommend, the more you weld on this to the table, guess what? The more you're gonna have to grind off. Okay, so let's not put too many welds on here. Now, another thing, you always wanna put, like, so you're, you're gonna be removing this, so you wanna put tacks just on one side, okay? I have two tacks right here on the front. Try to, I'm trying to get, better view okay I have two tacks right here on the front and the reason that they're on the front is because when I'm done with this piece I just pull it right to, towards me <clears throat> and it's gonna come off if I put a tack on the front and a tack on the back I'm gonna have to go get a grinder with a cutoff wheel because it's not gonna come off okay so one tack two tacks just enough to hold it and it's on the front side because I'm gonna be putting pressure on it this way, especially when I'm chipping it and when I'm wire, wire brushing it, okay? Now, next thing. So in, in the flat position, you guys were working at a 90 degree work angle, okay? And a 10 to 15 degree travel angle, okay? That travel angle is still going to stay the same, okay? We're gonna be a 10 to 15 degree travel angle, except that 90 degree work angle is now going to drop about five to 10 degrees. Now, why is that going to drop about five to 10 degrees? Because we are now working against gravity. So if we have this at 90 degrees, or even pointing down, what's gonna happen, right on the top of our weld that we just made, we're gonna get what's called undercut, okay? Undercut is the removal of the base material without the addition of filler metal, okay? So if we don't have that five to 10 degree angle pushing up, our weld is going up, and then straight in, okay? We're, we're helping prevent that undercut from happening. Does that make sense to everybody? So, so if you start welding horizontally and you're like this, guess what? You're going to have a big undercut right on top of that weld, and the next weld that you put on there, there's a chance that you're gonna trap slag in there. Okay, if you're making a multi-pass weld, uh, filling in a pipe, a, a joint or whatever, you know, that slag doesn't disappear, you just cover it up. So you're just covering that up and if you have to do a destructive test like a bend test, it's going to show up there and then you're gonna fail, okay? So, five to 10 degree work angle to still a 10 to 15 degree travel angle, okay? Now, most important part is this first pass, okay? If you go too slow on that first pass, you're gonna get a bunch of globs that come down from here, okay? First pass, you always wanna do just a little bit faster to get a nice base, okay? When we're welding, we have a heat-affected zone, okay? Like a big circle around where we're welding. And when you start out your weld, your heat-affected zone is only here because there's nothing underneath you. So if you were to go at a normal speed, you're taking that temperature and you're heating it up 
twice as fast as it needs to be, okay? And then you're gonna get it to start to say, say okay? So first pass, we're gonna weld rather quickly right across there, trying to follow right along with that line. Make sense? And then the second pass, we can slow down a little bit. Now we want to be the, uh, the toe of that weld. We want to be just above the toe of that weld. We don't want to necessarily be in the toe of the weld, that line that forms after our weld. We want to be a little bit up, 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 up above it. So rather than the center of your rod being at that line, maybe take the end of your flux, move it up about a, a 32nd of an inch to, um, to allow for that overlap to occur, okay? And if you guys are welding too cold, you're gonna get to what's called cold lap, okay? Cold lap is, it's, it's overflowing onto that other weld, but what's happening is it's just sitting on top of the weld. It's not actually penetrating into that weld. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, we're going to start out. I have my machine set. DC positive, and we're running at 125 amps right now, okay? First pass we're gonna do is our horizontal pass, okay? Like I said, we're gonna run it a little bit quicker, okay? Five to 10 degree work angle, and then our 10 to 15 degree travel angle. I like to run a little bit closer to the 10 degree travel angle for this, uh, just a personal preference, but that's the range you wanna be at between 10 and 15. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, get nice and comfortable, okay? We're gonna get our rod set up. Now, when you start here, you wanna make sure that you can get to the edge of the rod, right? Nothing worse than being comfortable and then trying to finish out of position and uncomfortable, okay? It's always best to start uncomfortable and finish comfortable, okay? Now, another thing before I start welding here, okay? When you start welding across, it's going to feel like you're going downhill, okay? A little trick is to raise your elbow while you're welding across, okay? If you raise your elbow while you're welding across, it's going to help keep that nice straight line, okay? Another thing before we start, when you tack your plate up here, you see how we're pretty much flat across here? Don't tack your plate up at like a 30 degree angle because then you're gonna be welding downhill, okay? So, we're gonna weld our first pass here. Fire up. Like I said, you wanna run a little bit quicker than your normal weld. Okay. Now, same thing in all the videos that we've watched before your slag from the top. Okay, we have a wire brush for a reason. Use your wire brush. Okay, so now, you guys can see this okay? We have our base, our base weld. All right, nice and straight across there. All right, now the next weld is going to be right here, okay? And it's always best, you can restart on your rods, but rather than sitting there trying to tap on this the entire time, we're gonna take this. It's, you notice how it's out of the stinger tap it off your table a little bit and expose that electrode back. If you don't expose that electrode, you're gonna be here trying to strike your arc and uh, you're going to be tapping. If there's no need for it. You get rid of that stuff, you're gonna be ready to go. Now, what you guys can also do when you're welding here, remember we talked about these grooves. If you're comfortable having these grooves, you know, you can put this on a 45 degree angle and right here, you can hold a little bit more comfortable than having it straight on, okay? Now we're gonna make our second pass across here. Fire up. Now, when you guys 
get to the end, okay, the more you weld, the more that this is going to uh, eat away at it. When, so when you get to the end, you want to kind of wrap your rod around the end. Don't just stop right here. You want to take that rod and you want to turn it and wrap around the entire end, okay? Same thing with your starts, okay? I'm not starting right here. I'm starting out here on the edge. It's okay to start out on the edge. That's what we want to have, okay? Okay, same thing. Chip this off. Always wire brushing. Welding might be dirty, but it's a very clean process as far as actually making your welds. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna take my stick electrode. You don't wanna do that too hard because if you remove this slag off of here, you're going to you know, have a pretty crappy weld to start until it burns down to, uh, or your flux, okay? We're gonna weld our third pass right on top of this. Okay, and, and if you notice that this is cherry red, even after you are done welding on it, like you're, you're still standing here and you're waiting and it's still cherry red, you're running at too, you're too hot, okay? Let it cool down, go dunk it in the dunk tank, okay? You should never want to remove slag while it's still cherry red. What's the reason behind that? I'll tell you guys. The reason is because this slag is here uh, to protect that weld as it's cooling down. So if you're trying to remove the slag as the weld is cooling down, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull in those impurities from the, from the air and you're gonna contaminate your weld. Okay? After it cooled down for a second. And you guys should be able to tell when it is too hot, especially in the horizontal position. Flat's a little bit easier, or a little bit harder to tell, but horizontal is a lot easier to tell because your puddle is going to get extremely hot and it's going to start to sag and you're going to feel like, like you're penetrating uh, much farther into that metal, okay? So we're sitting here at pass three, okay? And we've taken up about three quarters of an inch, okay? That's about as much as we've taken up. So this isn't necessarily a race when you guys are completing these welds, okay? You should be taking your time and doing it accurately. Okay. Now, there, you guys might think that this is uh, maybe silly or, or you don't understand why you have to weld in the horizontal position. You're, there's going to be a time, if you're a welder, that you're going to have to perform a fillet weld in the horizontal position. Okay? You perform a fillet weld in the horizontal position. There's two ways of welding horizontally. Let me get a T-joint. I'll show you. Okay, this could be considered a horizontal weld. This is an easy way of welding horizontally, okay? Now, the second way of welding horizontally is if this plate was at a 45 degree angle. Guess what? We're at the same exact angle that we are for this. Does that make sense? So the surfacing weld is the, the, the precursor to welding the T-joint in the horizontal position, okay? I think we have enough, enough rod left for one more weld. So I've gotten three welds out of this one rod in particular, okay? So there should be no reason why we're still seeing full electrodes in the garbage can. Okay, chip our uh, flux off there, put our rod into our stinger, make sure that this is in here and it's not going to be moving around. Okay, another weld. Okay. 
remember to keep wrapping around that edge. Don't stop as soon as you get to the edge. Wrap around that edge. It's going to tremendously help you. Okay? You know, one of the things you guys are graded on when you're uh, working on these is your buildup of your ends. So that includes your start and your finish. Okay? If you're stopping all the way in here, that's not building up your end. Okay? Say, this is not uh, grinded whatsoever okay this is the mill scale that's still on there if you guys want to have a cleaner weld where your welds going to run a little bit better you can grind that and then hit it with a buffing wheel if you just grind it yes it's going to be a little bit better but those grind marks are um, you know they're going to make your arc a little bit erratic so if you grind it and then buff it and smooth it out it's going to be real nice uh, welding across there. Okay, let's show you again. There we go. Four passes there. It's difficult being this popular. I feel like a movie star. Thank you, thank you. You guys wait, this is going to be on YouTube. We're going to get a million hits on this. All right, so we're going to go through our fifth pass now. Okay, we're going to fire up. Now notice how you start to watch my elbow. It's only a three inch weld, so once I start to get to the edge, is when that, uh, that elbow starts to come up. Okay. Flip it off. If it's a weld that's done correctly, there isn't really much pecking that you need to do. A little bit of scraping, and that's pretty much it. Okay, now notice here, we have, let's not knock that down again. So we have our buildup of our end, right? And we have our buildup of our other end. Now you can see how there's just a tiny bit of undercut on there, maybe. Okay, just a tiny bit of undercut, and that's because I made five welds and didn't allow this to pull up. This is pretty hot right now. Okay. 